Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. This time I'm here with the second and seventh placers at the Virginia Beach event, Ryan Severin and Eden Salins. How you guys doing tonight? Good. Doing pretty good. How about you? Nice. I'm doing pretty good. You guys coming off a pretty solid weekend at Virginia. I just got done talking to Scott. Heard it was a very fun event. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mike, uh, T.O. did a great job, you know, with the actual event and then you know, saw a bunch of the, the boys and met some of the VA Beach crew. You know, I guess my locals now, so that was pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah, Eden, how was your weekend? It was a lot of fun. It was worth the flight. Nice. Eden yeah. got to see the, the ocean for the first time in his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being an inland kid, it must be rough. All right, so yeah. let's get on into the deck. So you guys both played Sid Sharon. You guys both played the same exact list? Uh, uh, same. I mean yeah, Ryan played two set, two different cards in the side deck. Okay, so very slight differences. Uh, so, Eden, why don't you explain first, why did you guys both decide to play this deck? Uh, I decided to play this deck. Uh, one of the kids at my locals, Hayden, he proxied the deck when all these cards got announced. And it just, like, seemed insane. And we just started testing it. And we've just been working on it basically since all the cards came out. And I've, I've been telling, like, Ryan and all of them that I think this is probably, like, the best deck. And... Obviously, it performed very well. And Ryan, how'd you feel about piloting it? Yeah, so I played against Eden the night before with Gotenks, and I kind of like the way Shin Shenron was playing, and just generally mean Eden have a pretty similar play style with Dragon Ball, so I trust his the deck choice and you know deck building. Um, so basically, I was going to play Gotenks until the morning of, and then Nick Minio kind of was like, I don't really like Shin Shenron, do you want to play it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, so I, I like the play style of it. Honestly, it felt like Kid Koo with a much better 30k. So nice. So Eden, you said you think it might be like the best deck in the format. So do you feel like it has any bad matchups? Or do you feel like every matchup is positive or at least like winnable? Uh, I think every matchup is winnable. I think your worst matchup, like realistic matchup, is uh, uh, Invoker. Is that, probably, yeah, like, that's kind of what I was matchup. thinking too. So how do you how do you navigate that matchup? So that matchup is very very hard uh you got like this deck is this deck is pretty easy relatively easy to play like uh anybody can play it and like very, do well but it's very hard to play and do like and win like anybody can take it in top but like against the invoker deck since they they have the apex and the uh, the burn like i played against jordan the night before and and, and he got the turn like i had the out to the victory strike yeah, you just have to have three ways to negate it because they can rip two card rip two out of your hand. Right. Uh so he like I had the out to victory strike, so he couldn't victory strike me at all. And then but he just goes turn five and burns me for six life. Right. So that's kind of the, that's one of the most annoying things about Invoker in general is that you can't usually can't play around both, and that is kind of annoying. But but besides that, I mean every other matchup feels either even or or favored. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's like one if you stick a making cabra. It's like, I feel like the game's always over. Like, as soon as you stick a Cabra, you should win. Uh, yeah, I don't think I lost a game that I played Mega Cabra. Um, I, the card is just insane. And in general, like, at least my matchup-wise, I had, the, like, the, probably the toughest time with Red Yamcha with the, the new tournament pack promo, just because that tournament pack promo is insane. Um, but generally, all the fair decks that I played against, I played against New Soul Striker. Um, I played against um, a Peel-Off list. I played against, like, some of the more, uh, quote-unquote, fair decks. And I just felt like Shin Shenron just absolutely obliterates them. Like, I was... During um, my match first, um, Daryl was playing Mono Blue Soul Striker. Like, he could just, like, draw a ton of cards, make me discard a, par discard a bunch of cards, and I was just like, okay, use Leader Effect to bring back a bunch of things. And he played Trunks, so they bounced him back to hand. I was like, okay, I just drew six cards. Like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, you that's a good me, change. I just combo them on defense and just do it again next turn. So, it, it like, it doesn't... Once you get to turn six, like, it's pretty hard to lose like your leader effect just generates so much value gotcha all right so let's start getting into the main deck here so firstly we are starting with the four makikabora four vegeta prideful transformation i think that's definitely pretty standard probably don't need the other unisons in a deck like this right yeah i the first list we did play gogeta but there was no reason to play it because the only unison you, you want to play is make because you want to keep make cover on field Right, yeah, you never really want to swap in and out unisons. I always feel like that's a really tricky way to navigate unison decks, like especially red, where you have a lot of really good unisons. Playing different ones kind of gets a little weird sometimes. But going into the kind of standard card lineup, we're playing four super combo. Obviously, Zamasu, my opinion, 
the best super combo you can play if you're playing a mono yellow or mono blue deck. I'm sure you guys probably felt similarly about that. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. It just it stops another. It just stops another attack. Yeah, just a bunch of utility. Like I just felt like it's just better than drawing a card almost every time. So I did the top cut breakdown earlier this week, and it really didn't seem like there was a ton of aggro in the format. Like you know, these are relatively smaller tournaments, and and really nothing aggressive really made it to top cut. So how did you guys feel about that? In terms, like was that was that true or not? And then do you feel like you needed Nimbus, Ryan? Why don't you go first? Um, so I felt like I played actually versus a good amount of aggro decks, and it was a lot of the matchups got, got kind of close, but I was able to kill them on the crackback. Um, some of that was due to Cell Secret Air being extremely overpowered, um, <laughs> and just playing a free quad strike 40k with two attacks. Pretty um, good idea. Just, and just like doing a bunch of like um, the four drop um, Ace Shenron is great for like killing on the crackback as well. So I felt like I was able to you know fend off aggro pretty well, but I still felt like it was still like had a, a place in the meta. It's not like Vjax like this face like um, like super rush, but like more of like snowball -y, like build advantage decks, like the red Yamcha deck with the new tournament promo. I think like that's a pretty aggressive deck that, you know, it can see a lot of play and be good. But for the most part, um, I just felt like I had control over most of the games once I got to turn three or four, like unless they like just put a ton of pressure on early that I was just gonna turn the corner. Gotcha. So Eden, why don't you explain Vegeta's final flash to us? Cause I'm actually really curious why this card uh, found its way into the main deck. Uh, it's an out to victory strike. Oh, okay, so it just blanks the whole thing and you don't get victory strike? That's that's pretty good. All right, I like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's legitimately the only reason. Because, like, once you get to turn four, it's like, if you go second, it's your turn four and their turn five where they play Apex. Right. So if you, so you need multiple, like, the three Nimbus is also an active victory strike, so you need more outs to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gita Final Flash also has another utility of pumping your leader on offensive. And uh, you can actually, uh, if you're trying to aggro the Invoker matchup, if they play Vegeta turn three, you're able to negate their invoker on your first attack before like they're pretty much able to do anything and they they don't have a book for the rest of the turn you just go all out oh nice all right I, all right i definitely like that card after hearing the explanation very solid all right so moving along obviously we're playing four ofs of all the sinchenrongs except for the new promo a lot of people said the new promo was like really weird slash kind of bad so how'd you guys feel about that turn impact promo sinchenron i mean i was uh you didn't, didn't explain it okay so that, that that card was a two of in the deck uh, until we realized how bad the invoker matchup was. But the, the only reason, the only idea behind the card is it's another target, like another name for the the reanimate ability. Yeah. Also, like once you get to turn six, if you have that card out, your opponent's leader will never attack again. Uh, yeah. So you're just constantly cycling so, so a card to the drop area and locking the yeah, leader you down. You stack a dude and then you reanimate the four drop. And because uh, the three drop taps are leader, so you ran the four drop, and their leader can't attack. So like the leader will never be able to attack again after turn six, basically. Oh, uh, that seems pretty good. I mean, yeah, it makes sense as a one of two because obviously you want to have all the different names that, that you can in the drop area, right? So as a one of, yeah, makes sense. So so Hazy Shenron here, Hazy Shenron, I think is you know pretty clearly the worst of the two Shenrons, but you have to play X amount of Shenrons to make your leader consistent, right? So did you guys feel that four of all the Hazy Shenrons was particularly good? How'd you guys feel about it, Ryan? I, I love the the Hayes guy. Like pretty much, if I summed it early, if I didn't have one star ball and I just had the two star, it pretty much said like you're cutting life for taking two or discarding two cards, and then it being able to just restand it with the leader just allowed you to have protection and just continually pressure them. So I liked it. And then the four drop, like the combo pop ability, um, is useful versus certain decks. And then I like it's a free X evolve to untap, so you can just go pre aggro with it, hit them with crit, free X evolve swing double strike and then like crack it into successor into sell so i saw myself doing that a lot to put a lot of aggro on or to like pressure unison early yeah i think the four drop hate is pretty nuts i actually seen a lot of people like using that to just like pop sell Zeno. you know one of the technically most unbeatable cards in the game so having that to do that for free you know zero energy wise is is pretty solid so moving on to a few more utility cards uh last straw i'm assuming is for you know removing unison encounters but also for going for game when needed zarbon the emperor's attendant this is a card that i've seen a lot of people kind of toy with in this deck but i haven't gotten confirmation whether it's like you know op op or just like decent so eden what made you want to play for this in the deck was it really that worth it uh yeah this card's insane in the deck so like th this card is the card that separates like the 
players that like can like top the event versus take the players that can win the event. Because you gotta know exactly when to Zarbon. To, uh, because like when I was playing this guy Ryan, he was playing Go Tanks, and he he would try to go like all out and or, like try to kill someone, and I just like Zarbon, it just it just like blows him out because his whole plan just went to waste. Because now I have another blocker. Yeah, or like I couldn't go tanks fusion it because like I was like planned to make him block with the Sinchon on so I could go tanks fusion and pop it. Right. And then you Zarbon and restand it, and I'm just like, oh, well, my whole turn, my whole play just got negated, and you have another blocker, and I can't do anything now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty cool to hear, because honestly, I played this card during Mecha Apes, and it was one of my favorite cards in the deck, so it's pretty dope to hear that. So, uh, next up, we have the basically two Seeker Rares, the one Celzino, and the one Fu Shrouded. How do you guys feel about the uh, the Sin Shenron Seeker Rare itself? It's not good. It's not worth it. Yeah. Celzino know significantly better yeah like, Celzino wasn't a card you, you would play that card but Celzino is a card right yeah, that's pretty much how I feel so I think it's just the, in my opinion the best card in Dragon Ball right now I think it's extremely extremely overpowered um being able to, to play a 40k quad strike dual attack for free is to me like I won multiple games that I had no business winning <laughs> because I had just had Sin Chen run nine drop out and I just literally hard cast a three drop, swung with both of them and cracked them both into a twelve drop for free and just killed my opponent. Yeah, dude, this thing should seriously have like a one green, one yellow cost at the very least. Cause the fact now that it's being played in like mono green, mono yellow decks, I don't I don't think that was necessarily intended. But uh yeah, that's a little crazy. Alright, so I actually never played Celzino the whole weekend. Man, that, sounds, that sounds like it kind of sucks, but at least you still did pretty well. So, all right, moving on to the side deck. I'm going to let Ryan talk about this because it's actually his side deck. And then, Eden, I want you to talk about the differences that uh, that you chose. So, Ryan, just run us through the side deck, talk about what was good, what was bad, all that stuff. Yeah, so Mechi Cabra, I liked um, for certain matchups, like Invoker and stuff. Um, so, you can, like, just, like, stop them from doing, like, Victory Strike or versus, um, Cell Surge to stop them from doing, like, certain plays. Um, so, I, he was solid in the side. I don't didn't ever side in the third one. I max side in two, so I may change that if I play the deck in the future. Haru was just universally good because yellow is just extremely good right now. Green's really good right now. I'd probably main deck Hidden Power Supreme Kai at least one of. In my opinion, I sided in every game. Um, I sided in Vegeta's Final Flash. That's just if a card in my deck was bad in a matchup, I just take whatever that card out was and put in Vegeta's Final Flash because it's just universally good. Um, Poutine and release from evil and ended. They never ended up needing. And then Burning Impact is the difference that I just tried to side deck um, to like combat the discard pile abuse decks. Yep. And I sided it in and I just thought it was extremely lackluster and I will probably never side deck it again, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of awkward that it relies on your opponent to attack you for it to be good, right? Like Scott was saying the same thing. He sideboarded three of them and he kind of wishes he instead, instead sideboarded the one drop Toa. So. That might have been a pretty yeah. solid. Yeah, I, I told them before the event that Toa was better than Burning Impact too. Um, but so I don't really know why I decided to play Burning Impact. <laughs> but uh, I, I played it once in, during the event. And I was like, well, that didn't really do that much. So. And then what was with the Mirror Assault from the Sky? Just another kind of. Yeah, versus Aggro, just to pressure them. It's another double striker. Gotcha. So Eden, what were your differences, and how'd you feel about the differences? Uh, I played two Mira and three Haru Haru was the only difference. Gotcha. So you didn't play which card? Burning Impact? Burning Impact, yeah. Gotcha. And how'd you feel about your sideboard? Was it solid? Was there anything you would have changed? Uh, so my, the side, the, I knew the deck had a semi problem against aggro. So I expect to, expect to see some Gohans there. That's why the Mira and the uh, East Kai's are in there. Yep. Because you can go 30k double track. It's pretty hard to beat. And then Invoker, it, that's why there's three Mechacabra, the Vegeta's Final Flash, and two Release from Evil. Just more outs, because, like, Zarbon doesn't do anything against that matchup. SS3 doesn't really do anything against that matchup. So I, I side in, like, six cards again and against them. And the Poutine is against uh, all the fair decks, basically. Because you can Mechacabra, tap something down, and then just play play your Poutine for free. So if they play anything like Ape or whatever against the with the Gotenks deck, it may tap your Sin Shinron down. They're also not attacking you with their double, 20k double strike. Gotcha. All right, guys. So that is the deck profile. Thank you guys so much for going through that with me. I know uh, taking time out of your guys' day. So that being said, guys, Ryan, why don't you go first? Any shout outs you want to get out there? And then Eden, go ahead. Yeah, so shout out to uh, the team, the boys, you know, the TV boys. Um, shout out to Eden. He made the deck. He's, you know, one that put me on. And then yeah, shout out to, to Dashi and the rest of the homies that, uh, you know, on the squad, shout out to you, Joey, for putting us on the channel.
Eden, take it away. Uh, I want to shout uh, Dale on for getting the room for us, making this thing possible, make me want to go to this event. Uh, shout out to everybody that was there this weekend. I want to shout out uh, Hayden and Rex for helping me work on the deck and test it since it came out. Oh, and shout out to you, Jay, for having us on. Awesome, man. Thank you guys so much. We will see you guys next time you talk.